Yes, here we go. It is the PMP. I don't know if I'll be as famous a PMP as last week. Terry, how are you, mate? Thanks for making my week all the more enjoyable, mate, because for once on the PMP, the post-match push, it was not myself who was the target of the usual. <laughs> he's, he's had a good swally, hasn't he? How are you doing, mate? <laughs> I'm all right, boys. I'm a wee, I'm a wee bit more... Uh... I'm a bit more accomplishments this week than I was last week. Um, so I, I apologise before we come on. I apologise to you again live. I'm really sorry for, for ruining the show last week. Um, did not, but, mate. Did you not. Know, but do you know what it was, boy? See, I'm, I'm, that, that game, um, it, it just, I don't know, it just affects me in a way where I would just get so agitated and um, I just I just started drinking as soon as the game started. And, and yeah, you're so you. nervous. You're so nervous. You're just banging. You're just banging them in. And see the more I think about it, like see if there was a camera on me and me and my old man last week when you were watching that game and somebody watched it back, there, there'd be a white van coming to get you. You'd never be allowed out into normal civilization again. There was one point I was thinking about it today. I'm just do you, do you ever think about something and you just start laughing? Even though you're in public and you're on your own and people are probably looking at you as if you're not wise, I just started laughing and I was thinking about the point last week where Adam Adis, Adam Adis scored 60 seconds after Rangers had equalised. I'm coming 50, my dad's nearly 75 and I'm trying to lift him over my head. Adam <laughs> 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 Adis scored the goal. Crazy. Uh, I'm still getting over the fact we had, uh, we had that player Wang giving up for that tackle, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, call him wine, did it? <laughs> anyway, listen, here, here's what's happening today, right? I've got right, yeah. Happy days, bottles of mate. beer. When they're done, that's it. There's no more. I haven't even had a drink today. Have you not? I've not had one. No, I'm, on the, I'm on the strawberry Ribena, mate. Right, I've got nothing. But anyway, who cares? Let's get stuck in. We'll do all that good stuff first. All that good stuff means give us a wee like, give us a share, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Or oh, become a Boys of Us member. Likes of 420 somewhere, he's dished a few out recently, so a big thank you to you as well. Likes of Gary Brown, Ali, Pam, Martin K, Jim C. There's loads of you. San Fran Celtic, what's that name? Still love saying that's never got old. That and balls to the walls. I think they're the best two names I've seen. Smell the gloves in as well. Loads of you, but it doesn't matter. It's all free content anyway, so don't worry about that. Right, 3 0, Terry. I got Livingston vibes today. It was. Damp squib first half, but compelling, convincing, confident final score. With the second half that was much improved for the first half, I don't want to be overly negative. I think the, the positives are we've won 3 now. we've got a clean sheet and we're four points clear. Right, end of. I think the first half, though, what really, I suppose, concerns me the most is, what is it going to take to get these guys to do two halves of real intensity like all 11, or in today's instance, 17 players, Terry, uh, that Celtic used, are all in tandem with their motivations and aggression and to go and win this title. It seems, even the, 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 the game last week, whilst they get a hell of a lot of praise for that first half showing, the second half fell a million miles off that. I tried to put it down to fitness and things. This week, I look at it and I'm like, you've got an opportunity to go four clear, really ramp up the pressure, I expected a similar start to when we seen at Ibrox against lesser opposition, but it didn't happen. They are a confusing side, the Celtic one of the season 23-24, are they not? I think there might be some mitigation today, though, boys. They became, became to hear from some of the guys, uh, Phil, Mark, Regan, that were at the game. But from, from watching it on the, the TV... Um, with the, the amount of rubbish that was on the pitch, and that's not the players that we we're talking about. And the, I think there was, I think there was a serious, serious gale um, throughout that whole game. And Celtic were clearly against that breeze in the or gale in in the first half. And I, I, I don't know. Without being there, you don't know how bad it was, but it definitely, definitely looked bad. And I probably wasn't that bothered. I, you know, you always want this. You always want the game done and dusted in the first 20 minutes and then you start to get nervous and all of that. But my, my thoughts were, it, it appeared to me that the the gale was intense and that was very, it was making it very, very difficult for Celtic to try and play any football. You could you could clearly, clearly see that they were struggling and when St Mirren players were clearing the ball, it was travelling, it was travelling nearly the whole length of the pitch and my, my only thoughts were, 
I hope I hope that that intense intense gale remains in the second half because if it does, then then we should be fine. And I don't I genuinely I don't think it's any coincidence that we came out and we, we buried the game within 15 minutes in the second half. And that's fair. Wind in our backs. And even if you look at if mm. you look at the first goal, you can see the the ball's been played in from Alistair Johnson to Tati. And it's actually it's actually making its way forward. It, the, the wind's taking it forward, and it just sets up beautifully, beautifully for him to get his touch. And as soon as he hits it, it's in the net. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we looked good in the first half. And I, I, I get you, I get your angle where we probably haven't had two consecutive good halves in any game this season. But I'd be keen to understand from the guys that were out and about Glasgow today what just what impact the wind had on that and. And if, if if it was as bad as it looked on TV, then I think there's I think there's mitigation against that first half performance. I think that's you you're being pretty balanced there. Albeit if it's not just if we take the wind into in consideration, yes, he'll to wear against it. But then we look at how they've played this season and how many times they have came out and kind of underwhelmed. I think that's still a factor in it also. Yeah. I think I think better versions of Celtic over come said conditions a wee bit better than what we did first half. But again, notwithstanding it, we go in the second half, three goals, clean sheet, confident display, and utilising substitutions, Terry. And I think when uh, we realised that sixth sub was coming on, you actually seen fans, uh, you know, around the dugout, sort of <laughs> shouting at the top of their voices at Brendan, whoa, 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 don't do that. I thought this season really would be taking a strange turn if this isn't a thought out um, <laughs> call by the manager to bring on a sixth sub, he just never know though this season. Um, I think when I felt the game was sewn up, and I suppose when I looked at it as an image today, it probably gave me one of my most confidence building moments that will win the league as well. I've been relatively confident throughout, relatively. Um, I think it was when we did the quadruple sub. And I think when you look at the squad numbers, it's the number nine and the number seven coming on. And that means they're fundamentally involved in the first team. And of course, it was Ida who is scoring with real, real ease. He must be under 90 minutes per goal right now. Someone will be able to find out, I'm sure, in the chat. Some budding Opta analyst um, will be able to tell us where it is. But I'm going to guess he's a goal under 90 minutes in a Celtic jersey so far. So he comes on, scores again. You've got Palmer. Double figures for goals and assists this season. He's coming off the bench. You've got your captain, Callum McGregor, coming off the bench. And suddenly, when we're making subs like that, that's when you start seeing the screw turn a wee bit in our favour. I think that that's a... And what, James Forrest was the other one? Over 100 goals and assists for the club and 20-odd trophies. You know, that was your four subs there and you thought, fucking, do you know what? That looks... Maybe it's just the optics of all because they were all coming on at the same time. But that was actually one of my highlights of the game today, to be honest with you. As a standout moment, I thought, fuck, that kind of... I feel a bit better about ourselves now. Like, you know what I mean? What we've got, what options we've got available and who's coming back into the floor, Terry? I can't remember much about last week's show, but I can remember saying that I wish we'd brought James Forrest on instead of Yang. And we made that, said it a few times, yep. made that substitution today. And I don't know why we didn't make it last week. But then ju just come back to what you said about the first half and see the more I think about it, Boise. You know, we did still have plenty of possession. And when the lineup came out and it was Kuhn, Kyogo and Yang up front, I, I did feel that front three is very, very lightweight. And... That said, Kuhn and Yang had lots and lots of the ball and they had lots of opportunity to create stuff in the first half. And I think I think both of them flattered to deceive a little bit. You know, they're they 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 look like out and out wingers. They they go at the, the fullback, they take them on every time. But what what is the actual output? And we've talked about this so many times. We've talked about it with with Yang before, and you know, I, I I think he might he made one goal for us, but he's maybe only one goal and two assists. And this is from someone who's who's had a decent amount of opportunities. And even even though Kuhn's form has improved um, after sort of the the first few games where where he was kind of finding his feet and getting fitness, the the output still isn't the same as the guys that they've replaced. So Kuhn has sort of 
replaced a batter, albeit a batter was fit or unfit, sorry, in the first half of the season. Um, Yang came in and took the place of Maeda or Palma, but he, neither of those players have got anywhere near the, the numbers of the, the guys that they've been replacing. And you've even seen it, Palma was only on a little bit towards the end and, and he still ends up getting getting an assist. And I just I just don't know. And maybe maybe I'm just focusing on on Yang's mistake last week and still penalising him for that and I haven't forgiven him for it yet, but I'm not Did sure. Did you think he I'm was sure. lucky to get a start? Did you think he was lucky to get a start on the back of that? Because I've described it this week when I was speaking with Jonathan. I found what Yang did when it wasn't went down the line when he's turned said I called it the cardinal sin and I stand by it because he gives up. He's not as wrong-footed as what his exaggerated reaction was as he stood there motionless, having been turned inside. The one thing he shouldn't have allowed anyway. Um, but see, when you give up, I, I don't think that warrants to start the next week. I, I, it was on him anyway. Had he not given up, because he hadn't done the basics right, but then to give up, to me, it's like, that's uncoachable. That's just wrong. And I don't know how he found his cell in the start of 11 today. I think it's by default, Boise, because um, Pal Palma's only, that's Palma's first involvement in a match day squad for a while. So he, he clearly would, well, I'm assuming he hadn't the fitness to start the game. Um, Forrest, given what we've seen this season, is only, is only getting 15, 20 minutes. So... I think I think he he got the start because there really wasn't anybody else to to put in that position, and yeah, I think he found himself fortunate. And and I know he tried today, but he, he didn't really do a great deal to make me think that that this is someone we can hang our hat on on, on these last five games. I do think there's a player in there, and um, he, he's somebody that I want to see get opportunities. And I think there is a chance that he'll he'll flourish and he'll mature into. To a good player for Celtic, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I want. I want to see him starting in these next five games, and and he, even the fact that Palma played whatever he played today, 2025, 20, he just and he's he's got his deficiencies as well. Don't get me wrong, but he just looks as if things are, things can happen when he gets the ball. Whereas when Yang gets the ball, yes, he might beat his man, he might beat him again, but you're not really expecting him to score. You're not expecting him to play that killer pass. You're not expecting him to cross the ball um, for somebody to get a tap in. I don't know. I, I think it's th th those positions. We've had so many players over over the course of this season fill those positions. And, and then we've even got our... Uh, English Championship Player of the Month that we let uh, go out on loan in uh, in in Good January. He, he's flourishing down there. He's absolutely not flourishing. Do you know what I mean? And I suppose if, when I, I was thinking about this earlier today, if Mikey Johnson crossed the ball the way Maida did last week, or he made that error that Yang made last week, or he done some of the frustrating things that Palma does, you know, you can just feel the howls coming from the stadium because it because it's Mikey Johnson. Hey, um, I think that's a great point. I, I think, think that's a brilliant point. I think that, that, that given up instance last week at Ibrox, I think you turn that into Mikey Johnson doing that. And it, it was quite similar to the Mikey Johnson one when he came on in the Celtic Park game. Um, yes. Just at, at the, the turn of the year. But yep. that, that kid's flourishing down there. And I don't think I don't think anybody at Celtic doubts that, that there's an amazing or not an amazing, but there's a, a really good football player in there. You you've heard you've heard people from from the first team talk about his natural ability and things like that. But the, the way things are going now, I'd be looking for 20 million for Mikey Johnson during the summer. Hey, <laughs> I, I wonder what most guys say, what will there be in the English Championship? Ten player of the month? Something like that. I wonder if any of them have ever been sold in that then corresponding summer that follows, right? I wonder what sort of fee any of the player of the months that have been, even if they've just won it once, what sort of fee they then leave that league for or other club for um, that next summer. I bet you the fees on average are pretty high. They should make the playoffs. Sold. They should make the playoffs, Boise, which would then uh, make it interesting if they went up. Um, but there's also there's been there's been rumours of of EPL teams as, aside from West Brom EPL teams taking an interest in him, such as the the impact that he's made. But anyway, he's not gonna he's not gonna have any impact on these last five games. Yang is gonna have some involvement um, on what I've seen today and what I've seen last week. I, I would I would like to I would like to think he'll not start yep. all five, but we are where we are. One guy who is though, 
Terry, let's talk about that first goal. He does um, break the deadlock, as it were, in the second half. Rio Tati, absolutely outstanding, um, that finish. And the difference that you see him in the Celtic team, but looking for whatever reason for a hungrier version of himself as well. You might be seen at the beginning of this season. I appreciate that um, Celtic haven't been the most cohesive side this year anyway. It's not been the vibe under Ange where everyone was pulling in the same direction and there's a real chemistry between between the, the, the players. But I think since he's came back from his injury knock, he's probably realised his EPL target, which he was quite open and honest about, if you remember, about 18 months ago. That's what he wanted to do. I think he's probably realised with the injury that that's further away than ever. And, and in fact, maybe it was a blessing that he got that new deal from Celtic, which will have bumped up his wages no end and secures his future for another four years on said better wage. Rather than had he held out, he could have been a, a, a contract with less time to go, but worth a lot less and kind of becoming a forgotten man. And suddenly those EPL clubs, <laughs> scouting lists are so vast, mate, that you're on it one minute, you could be off at the next because they're just on the, on the next one, you know? And I just think from from Atati's point of view, we might have seen a refocus now, Rio Atati, um, for this running. And, of course, there's trophies at stake here. And he'll enjoy, like most players, you have to have a certain level of ego about you to make it a top, you know, in professional football, let alone top-level professional football, um, like a big, massive club like Celtic. Um, you've got to have a bit about you. You've got to have that wee bit of ego. And I think he'll like the fact that, you know, I helped get us over the line or was I the, the catalyst for us getting over the line, that sort of thing. Of course he'll like to hear that. Of course he'll want to prove that. And I think he said in one of his interviews as well, I want the Celtic fans to start asking the question or, or saying the words, we need Rio in the team. He said that only a couple of weeks ago. And I think we're seeing that problem and stepping up again today. I think the only thing that's been missing from his comeback is that sort of trademark Hitati goal where he's he's picking the ball up on the, the edge of the box and and the way he strikes the ball, boy, see, you think about some of those goals where the, the two that he scored against Rangers, the one that he scored against Hearts, he, he just he gets such power into into those shots from, from in and around the, the edge of the box. There was one in the first half as well where he, he got a shot away and it was blocked and, and then somehow the referee decided there was an offside when when there wasn't. But uh, I think I think just that, that goal kind of just signals now that Hitati's back and I think the timing of him coming in couldn't couldn't have been any better. We, we haven't really had him at any point this season other than a game here and a game there. He's been dogged with the injuries and he's probably one that we... I think the Celtic support at the minute, we're, we're, we're getting towards the summer and there's almost that we're resigned to the fact that we think Matt O'Reilly's going to go this summer. That's probably how it felt with Hitati last summer. You were going in there resigned to the fact that you were going to lose him. Such was the level of his performances last season. Then he gets injured early in the season. And as you say, you know, you're, you're, you're possibly on all of these... I wouldn't even say shortlist. You're on these long lists. You pull a hammy. You just go off them. You're you're off the radar. You're no good to us. You can't play for you can't play for eight weeks. You're no good to us. And they move as you say. They move on. They move on to the next name that's on the list. But fingers crossed, he's able to keep the fitness for the last not even five games. I'm going to say seven games because we obviously hope we get through to the cup final. Um, we hope we get through the semi next week and get into the final and a fit Rio Atati is crucial to what we're wanting over over the next six weeks, which is which is a double. Um even the captain as well, Boise coming back today. I know he didn't he didn't play um he didn't play much in terms of minutes, but it was still similar to last week, but he did look he did look a week sharper. Albeit, yes, it is St Mirren, and we were we were ahead whenever he came on. But that can only be good for him to get another another uh, another right and into the legs. Look at the we're we're kind of unfortunate because it kind of just felt we were starting to get everybody back from injuries. Um, the manager didn't fill me with any confidence that we'll see Maida back the rest of this season. He was very, very non-committal 
um, whenever he was asked around that injury, it sounds like it's something related to the hamstring. And again, those those don't repair over a week. They don't repair um, over overnight or over a week. I don't know. I, I think I think that we might might have seen the last of him for this season. Then you've got Scales has picked up a knock. So that's an that was an interesting one today to see who who replaced Scales. It was either going to be Welsh or Navrov. Navrovsky, um, the pole got the nod. I thought he thought he looked okay. Um, you know, we weren't overly troubled at the back. Um, I think the main thing there is it probably doesn't matter if it's Navrotsky, Scales, or Welsh, as long as Carter Vickers is is in the side and is is beside that person, we probably can get away with any of them. The only thing I probably felt that we were a little bit less effectual on the left-hand side of the pitch because Scales is naturally left-footed, Navrovsky isn't, and Yang is also right-footed. So having those players playing on the left-hand side but both being right-footed, it meant the only the only left-footed player in the whole team essentially was um, Taylor. And I just felt that made it a little bit harder for us to build on the left-hand side because Navrovsky's playing on the left-hand side, but he's right-footed. Every time Yang gets it, he, he's kind of leading with his right foot as well. So it kind of took away a bit of that natural balance. I don't know what the outlook is for Scales and his injury, but I probably think as long as we've got Carter Vickers fit, we can we can get away with whoever the other centre back's going to be. As long as we've got Rio Atai, Callum McGregor coming back, then we're we're good in the midfield as well. And we just it's probably those two wide areas that I'm most concerned about is can we can we get two players that we can absolutely hang our hat on? I don't think we can, but we might get from week to week, we might get a player who can come in. I think that's closer to it. Flourish for one game, then somebody else comes in, picks up the baton for the next week, and and so on. I think we'll limp our way through in terms of those wide areas. But as long as we keep the key, the key core, which is Joe Hart, Carter Vickers, Hitati O'Reilly, McGregor, Kyogo or Ida, I'm more than I'm more than comfortable with that. And then filling around those. And what what one one which is probably worth mentioning today, Alistair Johnson ended up with two assists today. And you know he hasn't he hasn't been the Alistair Johnson that we've seen whenever he first came into the side, and he has looked he has looked suspect at times. But two assists, I thought that was okay today. Um, he he got the assist for the first goal. He got the assist for Kyogo's goal. Um, well, that was two, a top assist, wasn't it? Let's, let's be real. I mean, I think the one for the the, the second goal, Kyogo, um, a well directed and executed header from Kyogo, not one that was. Not like last week, and I thought I thought it was more guilt edged um, than it seems to have got reported on. I thought it was a far easier chance and one that, to me, killer strikers take. Um, but today, good header he was on the end of. But again, that goal was all about the delivery from from Alistair Johnson, and what a delivery it was, Terry. Yeah, it was excellent. As I say, class. He's he's been he's come in for some criticism and rightly so I think rightly so yeah. because yeah. um you know he came into the side and ousted Josip Juranovic you know we 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 were able to sell Juranovic um make a significant profit on him and most Celtic supporters I think suffice to say felt that we we ended up with a a more rounded player in in Johnson. He hasn't quite hit the levels that he did last year, but the managers. I think. I think what's um, been interesting is the, the managers persevered with Johnson. We haven't seen what what Ange did whenever it was Ralston and Juranovic. Ange was kind of tinkering. You know, one week it would be one in, then it would be the other. Rogers has has nailed his his colours to the mast. It's Johnson, and if Johnson's fit, Johnson plays. And and Anthony Ralston's just had to dig his heels on the. On the sidelines, but again, you don't know at any stage whenever one of these guys gets injured and you need the backup player. There could, you know, something could happen in the next few weeks, and we need Anthony Rolson. And you know, again, I'm more than more than happy with him as as being a, a backup right back. But I thought Johnston today getting those two assists. Hopefully, that lifts his confidence a little bit, and hopefully, he can play a, a part in 
driving this thing over the line, which I really, really hope we do in the next the next five league games. Let's be real. Alistair Johnson, I think, brought a solidity uh, the right back rule that we we felt Juranovic neglected, and that was the defensive duties. And we we that I think we're in pretty much agreement with a few fine details. But I think you know we were pretty much in agreement. Juranovic, we thought was a bit overhyped, a wee bit overrated, and a good player, not a great player. I thought his valuation was fair. I thought seventy eight million pound. He looks to me like a £78 million player, albeit when selling to the bigger leagues, I think Celtic couldn't push that way beyond what we ended up getting for him, particularly in the back of the World Cup. That was where I thought it was a bit false. But in general, I thought he was a £78 million player. And the £3 million replacement comes in and looked far more assured. And let's be honest, under Angie's side, the team was more aggressive and therefore Johnson was more aggressive going forward, I think, as well. This year he's been cagey. I think when it's came to his uh, attacking play, his offense, his offensive play, as they'd say, across the water. And uh, I don't know. Today was a, it was good to see that he was getting that right because one of the things Mark was talking about on Thursday was the number of times he feels that he's given silly fouls away, dangerous areas that are conceding either free kicks. He was um, poor, boy, so he was poor last kicks. week. kicks. Yeah, and then it's a penalty last week. And, you know, if he's not, if he's defensively, putting you in vulnerable positions and his output going forward has been so minimal as it has been uh, this season, I think, yeah. then today looked a real step in the right direction. He had a very good second half and it's important that people don't think when you, when you criticise a player, it's as binary as you then saying, you don't think Johnston's a good player or you think he's rubbish. And then the next week when you praise him, it looks like you're a hypocrite. I don't find it like that. Football is an ever, you know, it's a sum of moving parts. Every game brings on a new experience, something that you've not seen from any of the players before. Every single game does that. So your opinion naturally will fluctuate. Your opinions will change. And I think it's as ever important that we're giving credit out where we give out criticism. You know, and it is easier, I think, to criticise sometimes people, Terry. And I think Johnson deserves a hell of a lot of credit that ball for Kyogo's goal today was something that has eluded the likes of Maida, a winger of ours time and time again. Palmer today tried to do a cross to the left-hand side. Wasn't that so? It was befitting of a guy that when he does go forward and he is playing with confidence, looks like he can actually be far more of a weapon than we've seen this year, um, sadly, in a Celtic shirt. It begs the question, though, why, why do we not see more of it? You know, I get that, and and I totally, totally took Mark's points on on Thursday night. He 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 has felt like an accident waiting to happen, and in in the biggest games that have mattered most, you know that that uh, that game against Rangers at the the turn of the year where he's had the handball, um, the, the penalty last week. As much as I don't think it's a penalty, it's still him that's involved in that incident. It's still him that you know. Could he have done anything differently? But I think the bit that people haven't really focused on last week where I think he was culpable as well because Yang's kind of got the, the brunt of it was Johnston's attempt to try and clear that ball last week before it ever got to Matondo. It was weak. It was very, very weak. So that's why I was I was happy today to see him involved on on you know for positive reasons. And when you see him delivering a ball like that, you're you're thinking, you know, why is he not bombing on just as much as, you know, why is he why is he not getting forward a lot more often? And is that something he could do a lot more of? He's a bit like Matt O'Reilly's penalty last year. You see that uh, last week, sorry. You see the the confidence and the execution from Matt O'Reilly last week. You're like, how has nobody asked him to take a penalty before? And with Johnson's wicked cross today, I thought, how come he's not been doing more of that this year as well? But We've got to be uh, happy that it's happening now in this running. And, of course, as I've already touched on, um, Atomida comes on and he's got a goal ratio, I think, way below a goal every under 90 minutes since he's joined Celtic. I believe it's 7 and 12 appearances. I would guess starts to sub appearances, that would be 6 and 6. Maybe 5 and five starts, 7 sub appearances. It's a decent return, mate. Let's be real here. And what I like about him is he's the polar opposite. To what Kyogo is. He's a real mix and matching. 
there always will be the comparison to the Jack Amakis thing. And the reason for that is because he's never been replaced. Ademeda now is getting goal return vibes of Jack Amakis and brings you that completely different option. I think he's the same type of player as Jack Amakis as such. But his profile, again, though, is so far different from Kyogo. He makes Celtic a different version of himself when he's playing. He's a completely different option up top. He does bring that goal threat. And today, he does it again. It seals the win. But and you can see why. He could he could be the type of player if he's had him all season, Terry could have made 10 starts, 30 sub-appearances. Because he is kind of the perfect sub to have in this in the Celtic side right now for Kyogo. What I would like to think, though, with, with Ida, and I think I think we've seen it quite uh, uh, already since he joined, that if Rogers feels he does in a, a vein of form that's slightly outshining Kyogo's, then he'll go into the team. And he'll do it, and Rogers will maybe be a wee bit more forthcoming in doing that than, than what Posta Coglu was when it was when it was Kyogo and Jack Marcus. But that's so important because it's the only way for the strikers to shine, and it's the only way for competition to completely work properly. As if it's competition, not just in name, but it's real, and it means if you drop the ball at all then you'll be out because there's a guy breathing down your neck. And if you're showing great form coming off the bench, great appetite for training, work rate, ethics and all that stuff, then that's got to be rewarded sometimes as well if the other guy goes, uh, uh, form has a dip. And that's got to be rewarded with starts. And that stimulates that competition for a jersey and that makes it real. That's That's the only way I think this works going forward if Ida was to be made permanent, that he has assurances that the competition will be a real one and not a, doesn't matter if Kyogo goes five, six games without goal and you do really well in the five, six games you come on as a sub, um, you know, you'll, you'll still be picked ahead of you. If that's the case, I think Adam Ida will have too much respect for himself, first and foremost, to be signing up in the summer. But if it's real competition then it's exactly what I'm looking for in this Celtic side, Terry, in every position, particularly up front. I've been impressed with him. I obviously wrote him off at the start and, um, you know, he, he's, he's he's really come onto a game. I, I listened to the manager. The manager was kind of pressed around potential of extending the deal. And again, it's a, it's a bit like the message that we got around Maida. He was very, very non-committal which makes me think that it might prove to be a difficult deal for for whatever reason. Um, but the, the Jack and Marcus comparison, I mean, I, I I think physically just the stature, he's big, tall, broad shoulders, strong, and he's totally the opposite of, of Kyogo. I, I think they're I think he's very, very similar to Jack and Marcus in so many ways, but also from that from the angle of if when Jack and Magus was there, if we had to start with Jack and Magus, you wouldn't have been bothered because you knew that you could rely on him. And despite the fact that Kyogo was the darling under Ange, there, there were times where Jack and Magus definitely felt like the best option. And that very rarely happened. He, he, he always had to play second fiddle. And, you know... God forbid, say something happened, Kyogo, and we had to run with Ida at any point as the first choice striker over the next six weeks. I I don't think anybody would be, you know, losing any sleep over that because despite the fact that he's a polar opposite, he just gives you so much, albeit in a in a completely different way. And he's really won me over. I, you know, I I thought it was, I I thought it was a you know, a, a poor signing at the time. I thought January was a window where we were going to go out and strengthen. I didn't feel a third choice or fourth choice Norwich striker was was going to do that. Um, do I think we still do better? Yeah, absolutely. But if we were to find a way to go out and sign him and he was to become a competitor, as you've described it, for the centre-forward position and it was him and Kyogo going at it together, then... 
I probably would be okay with that. Um, he's he, he looks a safer bet than O. And o, O's pro, o seems to have disappeared, and I'm not sure is O injured or has he just dropped out of favour or what, what's, what's the situation? I think I think you find a plan in the summer to get him either loaned out, wage contribution made, or pay off. I don't think anyone's going to bid for O from even from back home. Um, I think the real competition lies with Ida and Kyogo. I think you could see Rogers. You see Ida as one that we could do. I, I, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. For some, for some reason, I just feel, despite the fact that he was way down the pecking order at Norwich, there, there just seems to be, um, there seems to be a feeling that the asking price could be could be north of seven seven million, something like that, which is hard to believe. But you know, you know, what the valuations are like down there. Um, yeah, I mean, I wonder the way if as you just well. For Mike Johnson. But if they stay, if they stay in that in that league and the parachute payments come down again and all that sort of thing, they might feel like, oh, do you know what? It's all fucking see down there as well. The difference between five million and seven million is fucking buttons for them anyway. Um, I don't think his valuation is is necessarily determined or differs because of him scoring goals in the SPFL. If I'm honest, I don't yeah. think they'll be that bothered. I think it'll be about as mu how much Ida rattles his own cage. And if he does like, I want this, this, this is what I want, then I don't think it'll be too difficult to deal with. Um, and that'll then become dependent on what assurances Celtic give Ida if you yeah. were to join would be real. Yeah. Because if you're his agent, mate, you do start looking back through Celtic's very recent history and you go, if it's golden balls up front, you know, and no one's... No one's willing to to, to to drop him even when he's form dips. You're going to become a bridesmaid here and just kind of watching on by week in, week out. Then that won't happen. But if he's given these assurances, then I wouldn't be surprised if Adam either firstly, politely, and then more forcefully uh, uh, tells Norwich that I've made my mind up where I see my future. So get a deal thrashed out. I think, basically, the interesting dynamic in this whole love triangle is the lack of impact that Sidney Van Hooydonk has made in the English Championship, whereas he was probably the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, game right. that Celtic supporters wanted. Just, or just not on the basis of ever having seen him play, but just on the for the fact that he was Pierre Pierre Van Hooydonk's son. People are, you know, wanting him to have been the one that's come to Celtic, and he's made absolutely no impact down there with with those guys at all. I, I don't see any way where they'll want to to keep him beyond the summer. Which then, I suppose, brings Ida back into the the picture again down there. But anyway, that's that's for the end of the season. I still think, I still think he he definitely has a part to play. He'll finish um, with ten. He'll finish with the double figures for goals, mate. I don't think you can ask for much more than that. For oh, he's, he's already beat five, and I said he wouldn't. He wouldn't get five after yeah, watching him for for the first game. But um, no, he he he's going to play a big part, a really big part. And if if Maida's out. And I know we talk about this now and again. If my yeah. out, and if none of those wide players that were, you know, they're they're in and out of form, if none of those can sort of cement their place, there is still that thing in my in my head that Kyogo could revert onto that left hand side with Ida through the middle, and that that could be something that could that could work because that was predominantly his position. Before he before he came to Celtic, but we we've, we've seen it we've seen it in and the first the first the first Celtic like Raiders team when, when Edward yes. was still there and it, it didn't work that day. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean it's not going to work. Um, we've seen my it concern very, with that, Terry. Sorry to cut in. My my, my concern yeah. with that would be Kyogo adapting to new positions seems to be what's been beyond him this season, or a new even style of football, not necessarily a new position, but a new type of football seems to have been beyond him to adapt to now. Angie's system did suit him to a tee, and he was fucking wonderful for us in the main. He did have the odd spell where I thought, to be fair, the competition should have meant that, you know, he was taken out the side. But on the whole, the two seasons under Ange, we really, really got lucky that it was Kyogo up top and the amount of goals he got, the variation in the finishes, outstanding. Um, this year, though, it, the goal tallies fell off a cliff. The amount of chances he's been at the end of, 
fell off a cliff. Well, there's Ross Evans just came in. Chance that just, I wasn't sure what the tally was. I said it fell off a cliff. He tells there's only 16 goals he's on. That's midfielder numbers for the Celtic title win inside Terry. Whether you, you know, whether people want to agree with that or not, it is. And um, I just, I just feel that his adaption to the changes. And I don't like all the changes the Celtic side's been positive ones, by the way, that Rodgers has implemented. I'm not that, you know, naive. But I think your guy in his peak years playing up front signs a new deal with you with, what, 60, 70 goals already to his name in a Celtic shirt in two years? I thought, I thought he could have done a hell of a lot more. Jade Moffat comes in. She called me a Kyogo hater earlier, which I don't really... I don't think that's fair, Jade, to be honest with you, because that's going back down that binary route where I was talking about earlier, where you give anyone any criticism or even talk about competition for his jersey, it doesn't make you a hater. Um, and there's many examples on the channel and many episodes where you'll hear me talk about Kyogo and you'll realise I'm not. Um, we'd be out without Kyogo, but, you know, we'd be out of this title race, boys, without Kyogo. you would be referring to the two games against Rangers. It's a 38-game season, though. Um, and yeah, he stepped up in those games. No two ways about it. Numerous others, he's drawn blanks and we've dropped points. These are the realities as well. So we could have been way more out of sight if it weren't for Kyogo. It's all about being balanced in debate. And I think where I feel um, with Kyogo this, this year, when you talk about bringing in Ida and potentially looking at the two of them and answering your sort of question, Terry, my concern would be whether I've got the same conviction that Good players could always play with good players, I thought. But Kyogo seems to have not been able to to adapt even a slight tweak to his role. And what's undeniably been a tweak to the system overall, the Celtic are implementing this year. And that's 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 where my worry would be. Would he be able to be a partner to Ida? Would it bring out the best in him? Or would it be a similar season to this one where he's effective and he'll still contribute but he's not going to be the Kyogo of the first two seasons where whatever it was, that system just suited him to an absolute T. Yeah, but see, some of the some of the games Boise where he, he, he dropped into the the 10 role. For the first couple of games where, where Brendan put him in there, everybody was going, Ah, oh, yeah, that's fine, that's perfect. And then Did you come on like away. Is that kind of, fizz, really well? kind of fizzled out? It, no, it, it looked it looked okay, and then it kind of fizzled out. But my my thoughts are by a process of elimination again, he, he might be the best option on the left hand side, albeit we've not seen him in that position very often. But we know that that's a position that he was really, really familiar with before he moved to Celtic and it was also a position that he was um he was getting opportunities in the in the national team. I I I I buy into Jade's. I think what Jade's getting is is, and I think you're right. It's it's pinpointing those key moments, and I've talked about them before. I remember you and me having a conversation around is he the ruthless killer, and I was I was talking about those moments. That that moment at Ibrox where he doesn't have any time to think, and he shoots really really early and gets us the three points, and then he scores wow. that killer. He scores that killer finish in the Derby game at the, the turn of the year. And I'll, I'll hang my hat on him, boy, say, I'll hang my hat on him. If, if we're going to win this title, he's going to be, you know, we've talked about, we've talked about Hattati coming back, the influence of O'Reilly, McGregor coming back, Carter Vickers having to be there. Um, if anything happened to Joe Hart, where would we be? But I still think that the important goals that are going to get us over the line, if indeed that's what happens, I'd still hang my hat that he's going to be the guy that's going to get them because he, he's always come, come up trumps for us. And there have been long spells. There's been spells where he's he's at barren runs. He, you know, probably he's had opportunities where he's had too much time to think and he, he doesn't seem to be able to convert those chances. But when the key moments come over the next, over the next five, six, seven games, I still want them to fall to him because I'll add back him. I still think I still think he's the guy that's going to get the job done. As I much as I've been impressed, as much as I've been impressed with Ida, and as much as I, I probably can count himself really, really unlucky not to have started more matches. Um, you know, the the, the influence that he had yep. last week. You know, he, he could have started today. 
Oh yeah, I thought you might have. I thought that might have been one of the one of the the changes to the team. The Yang one wasn't one that I had envisaged happening, but that, that that's fair enough. Um, but yeah, it was a nice finish for Kyogo anyway today as well. So it's not it's not hating, no hating on the. Oh, we, we the love him. Guy. We love him. We just we just yeah. want him to to do what he does. And but Brendan spoke. I watched his press conference. Um, from yesterday or the day before, whenever it is. And he actually said he felt Kyogo's game had went to another level again. He said again. So he wasn't saying like another level like we've not seen before. He says he took his performance level uh, to another level again. Um, since he came in, he says that's what real competition can do. So that's what kind of led me to, you know, sort of expand a bit on what my thoughts are on that. And I, I think I'm in agreement with Rogers. But I'll take it one further, Terry. Let's say it's Ida or another of that sort of profile. Roger's guaranteed now, if it's not Adam Ida, has now made his mind up that it's going to be someone of that profile. I think that will and be it's his. Not it's not all. And it's definitely not all, right? Which I think we said about a year ago. Anyway, already I'd made my mind up. I was not having him. Um, I think you'll get another one too. You won't make the same mistake, mate, of what he did this summer and going with two strikers again. And it was two strikers, but it was one and a half. Because, oh, don't want really to get too disrespectful, but I don't think he was a realistic option for, for Rodgers to be starting games. So it was really just Kyogo. Um, he won't make that mistake again. Oh, in fact, that sounded like last summer already. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, hopes you're, you're talking as if Brendan's definitely here next season. You're, is that is that on the assumption that we win the league? Or is that, um, is, is that, is that uh, regardless of what happens? I think we win the league. I I think I actually think he'd be here regardless. Did you not pick up in, in that press conference that you're talking about? He did. He did talk about. They they asked him something. I think they were trying to talk around the. You know, they were fast forward and past the here and now, and and it's just, it's just it's just how things are now. You're always you're always thinking a few months down the line we've got a title to win. It doesn't. It's, what we do in the summer in terms of transfer activity isn't massively important at this stage. Getting getting over this line and getting the title is. But the question that he was posed was around potential changes in the recruitment area. We obviously know that there's two guys that are moving on, and the question was kind of around: Are there plans? You know, have we already started thinking about next season? I think it was an internal an internal question. Um, that, what's your involvement in the plans for next season? And he obviously said that he plays a big part in that. And and there was something anyway, his answer just kind of struck me where he almost said, and, you know, I really hope I'm here in the future to try and bring to fruition what we're, what we're aiming towards. See, but see, but there's, see. there seems to be an assumption that if we don't win this league this year, that he will be, be going there next season. I think he will regardless. I have two sides to this debate. I wonder if they are looking at Rodgers as being a legacy thing now and going, look, you've had your fun down in England, you left for the sort of mid-table side, Leicester, overachieved for a few years and then found out how wanting it, you can, you know, how, not how wanting, but how, how difficult you, how to be found wanting easily can occur in that league. You can be found wanting, without, you know, without much. I mean, he had two fifth-place finishes, English FA Cup in the bank, Charity Shield, I think he beat Man City as well, uh, a semi-final in Europe, and then before you know it, they were just above the relegation zone, and he resigned. Um, I mean, that tells you that, and you've already had the title run in Liverpool, do you want to go back for that, or would you like your the dream job and all that? Would you want it for 10 years? And if it was, that Celtic start becoming first and more trusting in how they allow money to be spent, how they allow foundations to be laid in a new a new sort of way that's one that's removed from what their ideologies are, which I think are stuck in the past and stuck in the biscuit tin, to be quite frankly. I think when it comes to to that, that might be the only way if they really are beginning to talk about maybe Rogers being, you know, beyond the three years, like way beyond it. Because other than that, I have to be honest, as much as I want him to do well here, and I still think there's more to come from him as a manager, and I don't think there's anyone really out there that appeals to me much more than him being in charge. Really, there's no no other, you know, candidate out there that really grabs you. Um, not only that though, 
I've got to be honest and say, if we don't win the league, I'm not quite sure how you keep, to keep your job when the advantage is still wear this year, all with us. And if you've not worked your magic and pushed the board hard enough to get what you wanted, that's on you as well, because one of your responsibilities is the football department. And by being a manager, using a forceful hand and getting things you want that the board might not want to, it's kind of part of the gig. So I wouldn't have any sympathy with any Celtic manager, including Rogers, if we finish second with the financial uh, with the financial swing and power being the way it is right now, Terry. I'm not saying it'll be like that forever, but in the current vibe, I don't see any way the manager can justify staying on unless it is a real long haul appointment, this one. And it's one that we're going to see him do uh, something similar to what? What could we compare it to? Because if I say something like 10 years like Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, folk will laugh because we'll never have that sort of success. If I say eight years like Derek McInnes at Aberdeen, <laughs> all I'm trying to say is that sort of length of time. So I wonder if that could be the only way he wouldn't lose his job if we didn't win the league. But I think we will win the league anyway. I love your optimism. I, I'm I'm nervous around it. I, in, in, just in terms of getting over the line, just everything, everything the way this season has played out, we've had massive deficiencies. We should have had this thing wrapped up. We did have it wrapped up. We handed it back to them. Um, you've, I, don't, I don't even want to go into stuff today about referees and all that kind of stuff. There, there were a few things today, though. I, a couple of notes I've scribbled on my page. Just, just, just by the by, by the by, there wasn't any sort of obvious referee contentious issues today. However, three minutes had it on in the first half. We're struggling at nil nil. We're we're puffing and puffing. We're not getting the job done. Yet there was stoppage after stoppage after stoppage for absolutely anything that the game could be stopped for. Yes, there was head injuries, which was at least three minutes on its own. Then there was lots and lots of other stoppages. It just seemed so disjointed, stop start in the first half. We've had 12 subs come on throughout the course of the game. And yet the total added time, first half and second half, was seven minutes. Yet last week, in a game that seemed to just flow from start to finish, there was eight minutes added on at the end. But anyway, not going down, you. Not going down that you. route. Not going down that route, but sometimes the subtle... There's, you think the referees had a good game and then you just think about some of the little subtle things that might be going on as an undercurrent. But anyway, anyway, you and me sitting here is not going to change hundreds of years of, of that kind of thing going on. But in terms of Rodgers, I, I I don't see him walking away, even if we don't win it. I don't see him walking away and I, I genuinely don't see us sacking him because... Just because of the the cost that it would it would take to do that, I think mm. I think he's here. I think he's here. I think this. I think actually, in a perverse sort of way, Boise, if we don't get the job done, I actually think you could see Celtic push the boat out this summer more than if we do get the job done, because we never we never ever strengthen from that position where we're dominant and we're on top. If we lose this league. I actually think we could double down and back the manager more than we did last summer, more than we did in January, and more than we will this summer if we actually win the league. Yes, yes. But what, what, what comes with that, though, Terry, is because the world doesn't just stop all around Celtic. So Celtic comes second, we need to react to that. <laughs> yeah. But what actually happens is that means your rivals have been strengthened by the tune of 60, 70 million. So, of course, we're going to need to invest because they will. They'll invest their money. So, that's why it would become like that. So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's one that we can we can look forward to discussing at length, I think, in the summer. We'll call the it question on. Boise is, do you, think he, do you think Brendan Rodgers will be Celtic manager on the first game of next season? Yes. Yeah, I, I think so. But I don't, I don't think I that means think, we win the league. I just, I just think he'd still be there. I didn't think it earlier. I think he'll be there because he will win the league. And I think he would only be there if we don't win the league because there's some sort of real contingency plan that is going on that the um, front left and centre of it for whatever reason. We've got to find a way. We have to win this. Yeah, we will. 
I think I think we will. I think we are finding ways already. But I think I think I think pe people are thinking, and Celtic-minded people are thinking, this home game after the split is we're definitely going to beat them. It will, that that game will have so much jeopardy. And if you look at the games that we've had this season, we've had a draw, we've had two victories, but the two victories, you know, the the, the game the game at the at the turn of the year, you know, we had it sewn up, and then you know that, that could have very easily have ended up in a draw. And the first game at Ibrox was settled with one moment of magic from from Kyogo. So I, I'm hopeful that we'll win that game, but I, I'm I, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's an absolute guarantee. And then there's another school of thought which I totally buy into as well. It might not even come down to that game because you know you, you can't you can't just turn around with either side and say they're going to win all the other matches. And we could still be sitting here in September because that Rangers Dundee match might might still be outstanding by then. <laughs> I think it was still What's the your thoughts on that? I, I, I've actually, I, I actually feel really strongly about that because I, th I think Rangers are out of order, and I, I obviously don't know this, but the perfect time for that match to be played would have been the midweek before Celtic played Rangers. Yeah, they didn't um, want to. They I, would, wanted I would have thing, thought, I would have been. thought Rangers would not have wanted that under any circumstances. However, on the weekend after. That Wednesday, there was a game played on that park, which would suggest to you that on that Wednesday, that park would have been available to play. But Rangers wouldn't have wanted to play that because they would have felt that would have negatively influenced their chances in yeah. the Celtic Rangers game. Yet, they then kick off totally because the game can't play the week after. Yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. See, see this idea that this game can be played anywhere other than Dens Park. That doesn't that doesn't wash with me. That that that's just taking, you know, sport and integrity. You've got to play the same number of home games and the same number of away games. And the reason Rangers have got but that's not strictly true either. No, but because of the nature of the split. Yeah, but yeah, I get that. I get that. But that game has to happen. That game has to happen at Dens Park. That game cannot happen anywhere else. If if there's any integrity in this league. And another point you need to consider is, why have Rangers got five away games out of the last seven and Celtic have all these home games? That's because the fixture computer somehow gave Rangers all of the home games in the first phase and the third phase. No, sorry, wrong way. Yeah, that's the right way. Yeah, right. You're right. Right. Somehow there was, there wasn't, an even split in terms of the games that Rangers played at home in phase one and phase three, notwithstanding, take into account the actual the quality of the teams they were playing against in phase one and phase three in the away games. There was a real imbalance there that for that to have been luck is very, very unlikely. And these games have got to be played. These games I, have got to be played in the in the right places. That game has to be played at Dens Park. Right, so let's look at it. There's three rounds of fixtures before the split. Therefore, two and one, two and one, two and one, whether it be away fixtures, home fixtures, with each side. So we have 11 other teams in the league. Two will play at home. Um, two, two of those fixtures will play at home and one away for one team. And then for the next team, it'll be two away from home, one at home. Naturally, that's going to lead to uneven numbers because they're odd numbers. So it yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. work. Okay. So therefore, it was always going to end up like this. And if you actually look at it, Five out of seven away, is it, for Rangers, they think? But, but, but Celtic and Rangers will both end up playing 19 home and away. That 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 will definitely right. happen. So if, if that game happens at Dens. But if that game happens somewhere else, then that's unequal. Yeah. But we'll... See, the thing is, with the, with, with the last six games, we're four at home, two away. It's only one off, three and three. It just sounds like there's a bigger gap in it. There's only one out from three and three, really. So it's, it still has to be right. You can't, you can't, you can't play a game somewhere else just because. Yeah. Oh, but it comes to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take your point there. I think they're doing anything they can to try and get it over the line. I think there'll be a lot of size of relief that Dundee's top six fight was sealed today, and they're in it. I think there'll be a lot of size of relief on that, and that 
kind of takes that edge off it so, and so makes it more more today, about the Rangers today, situation. Does today allow the league to release the fixture? Yes. Post-split? And instant, in, interestingly, according to our source, Phil McGinley at <laughs> I was going to say Phil. <laughs> he said uh, he said twenty seventh April. It was advertised on the screens for Celtic at home to Rangers. No, but he came back and said that that, that was the women's game. Oh, did he? All right, I wasn't yeah, really. He did. Um, I just want to look here. Oh, did he say it's a women's game? Just ignore that last 30 seconds. There, there, is a, there, there has been a precedent before where a pre split match was played post split, I believe, between Celtic really? and uh, I believe between Celtic and Inverness. Let me just look here. So. Dundee are on 40 points. Okay, so Dundee are definitely in the top six. Nobody else. Yeah, it's done. Can, it's done. Nobody else can go past them. Yeah, it's so, sealed. That's what so, I'm saying to you. Right, so the, the, thought, the thoughts are that game doesn't have to be played before the split because it doesn't it doesn't impact the split. That game can be played at any stage between now that's, and yeah. the last day of the season. So there's no, there's no reason there's no reason for that game to be moved to any other pitch. Yeah, uh, I I think it's a wee bit too far. I think it's a bit it's a bit arrogant as well. Not that that's any surprise for them though to have now set a deadline that has to be played by Wednesday essentially, and that's now what's came out. It has to be played by Wednesday, even if it's behind closed doors. It'd be um, great if them, wouldn't it? I, I think it's a I think it's a banana skin. I think tomorrow's a banana skin for them as well. I don't really like being <laughs> forward the, playing. The more I think about it, I'm sitting here making a big deal out of it. It probably doesn't matter where they play. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably be a Rangers fan, but, but anyway. we'll see how they get on tomorrow. Anyway, time, that, I'm off. That's been over an hour. I'm away yes, out for a couple that. of years. Thanks for that, Terry. Brilliant, mate. And thanks to everyone in the chat. Over 200 live today for almost Amazing. the whole show. So a big thank you to each and every one of you who's watching. Plenty of you are. Um and I'm sure you will all have a good Saturday night. We're off. 3-0 Celtic. We're now. See you later.